These are the most shocking WWE Championship title changes ever. This is it! Jack Swagger for the cover! One, two, three! We have a new World Heavyweight Champion! About three months into her Divas Championship reign, Mickey James took on Jillian Hall on Raw. The match was thrown together with no build, so with that, as well as Jillian being a pretty goofy and non-serious wrestler, it seemed like Mickey James had the match in the bag. However, about a minute into the fight, Jillian hit James with a hard slam and used the ropes to get the three count. In a shocking upset, Jillian Hall defeated one of the greatest female wrestlers of all time to win the Divas Championship. However, the celebration was cut short. The Raw guest host that night announced that Jillian Hall would have to defend her title immediately against a returning Molina. The challenger made quick work of Jillian and ended her Divas Championship reign in under five minutes. Beating The Undertaker is already a massive accomplishment, but defeating him for a championship is even greater. In 2002, Maven, the newest member of the WWE roster, shocked the world when he single-handedly eliminated The Undertaker from the Royal Rumble match. The dead man was enraged that he had been eliminated by a rookie and made Maven's life a living hell. Finally, the two had a one-on-one -on -one match and the dead man even agreed to put his hardcore championship on the line. While Maven had Al Snow in his corner, the newbie was no match for the Phenom. Just as the match was about to finish, The Rock ran in and gave the champion a chair shot and a rock bottom. This was payback for The Undertaker, costing him a shot at the WWE Championship two weeks earlier. With The Undertaker laid out, May was able to cover him and become the new hardcore champion. How many wrestlers can say they pinned The Undertaker to win their first championship? It's hard to believe, but there was a time when Sheamus was kind of an unknown in WWE. The Celtic Warrior debuted on WWE's third tier show, ECW, and spent about four months there. In late October 2009, Sheamus debuted on Raw, and just about a month later, the Celtic Warrior won a battle royal, making him the number one contender for the WWE Championship. Keep in mind, this battle royal was Sheamus' fourth match on Raw. Unfortunately for the Celtic Warrior, the WWE Champion was John Cena. This was also during the peak of Super Cena, where almost nobody could defeat John Cena, and in the rare cases someone did, it was done by cheating. Even though the championship match was a tables match, all bets were on the champ. However, Cena didn't mop the floor of the Celtic Warrior, and the challenger held his own. Then, in one of WWE's most shocking moments, Sheamus pushed John Cena off the ropes and sent him crashing through a table. While winning the WWE Championship was a huge accomplishment, I would argue defeating John Cena cleanly was an even bigger achievement for Sheamus. It usually takes months or years for wrestlers to win their first championship in WWE. However, we have seen a few rare incidents where wrestlers have won titles in their debuts. In 2004, Carlito made his first WWE appearance on SmackDown and challenged the United States Champion, John Cena, to a match. With the help of a steel chain and an oblivious referee, Carlito won the United States title in his first WWE match. That's a pretty big upset, but not as big as this. In 2007, Vince McMahon aligned himself with Umaga. This led to Umaga winning the Intercontinental Championship, but as they say, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. During an episode of Raw, Vince McMahon issued an open challenge for Umaga's IC title. When no one answered, McMahon threw the challenge out to the audience. A fan named Santino Morello was chosen, but unfortunately, the match is made no holds barred. The Samoan bulldozer destroyed Santino, but help would come from the Almighty. Bobby Lashley ran in, laid out Umaga, and helped Santino go from fan to Intercontinental Champion in under five minutes. Sometimes, a championship win isn't shocking because the winner is inexperienced, but because they are too experienced. In 2022, Dolph Ziggler randomly showed up on NXT. He instantly started beefing with the NXT champion, Braun Breaker, which led to a title match about a month later. In addition to Braun and Dolph, Tommaso Ciampa also competed in the match. Thanks to some help from his tag team partner, Bobby Roode, Ziggler won the match and became the new NXT champion, something nobody ever expected to happen. What's even more shocking than this was seeing someone who can't wrestle win a championship. The man I'm talking about is Bret Hart. Okay, that sounded wrong. What I mean to say is, in 1999, Bret Hart suffered a career in an injury when he was kicked in the head by Goldberg. Additionally, a stroke Bret Hart suffered in 2002 completely put an end to Bret Hart's days as an active wrestler. That's why, when Bret Hart returned to WWE in 2010, he wasn't there to wrestle. However, that didn't stop the hitman from getting into the ring. On an episode of Raw, Bret Hart faced the United States Champion, The Miz, in a no disqualification match. Chaos ensued as more wrestlers got involved, including Chris Jericho. However, with the help of the Hart Dynasty, Bret Hart locked in the sharpshooter and forced Miz to tap out. 13 years after his last WWE title reign, Bret Hart once again had gold around his waist, at least until he vacated it the next week. Jinder Mahal's first run in WWE from 2011 to 2014 was pretty uneventful. In fact, one of his most notable events was forming 3MB, a group that lost much more than they won. That's why it wasn't an earth-shattering announcement when Jinder returned to WWE in 2016. Jinder stayed pretty low-key for several months, but things changed in April 2017. Mahal 
Paul pulled a big upset by winning a six-pack challenge to become the number one contender for Randy Orton's WWE Championship. Fans were shocked, but no one thought Jinder would become WWE Champion. However, at the 2017 Backlash pay-per-view, Mahal pulled off the impossible by pinning Randy Orton and winning the WWE Championship. Sure, Samir and Sunil Singh helped Jinder out, but nobody watching that match thought they would see Jinder Mahal become the WWE Champion, much less see him hold the title for 170 days. Jinder was a surprise, but how about seeing a non-wrestler win the WWE Championship? About a month into his first WWE Championship reign, Triple H found himself on SmackDown. The game was a fighting champion, and he said he would defend his title in the main event, but didn't say who his opponent would be. Finally, once the time came, Triple H revealed Shane McMahon would be the special guest referee, and the game's opponent would be Vince McMahon. Vince was against the match, but Triple H eventually goaded him into it. While McMahon got some early offense in, Triple H easily dominated the chairman of WWE. The match was also no disqualification, allowing the WWE Champion to deal even more punishment on his opponent. However, Stone Cold Steve Austin ran in, evened things up, and helped the boss get the 1-2-3 on Triple H. While Vince McMahon was the new WWE Champion, he would vacate the title a few days later on Raw. What's even stranger is that about 8 years later, Vince McMahon won another world title. Unlike most WWE titles, the only wrestlers who can compete for the Cruiserweight Championship are wrestlers 205 pounds or less. While that does take out over half the WWE roster, I don't think anyone expected this guy to become champion. At the Great American Bash pay-per-view in 2007, the Cruiserweight Champion Chavo Guerrero defended his title in a fatal five-way match. However, unbeknownst to everyone, there was a sixth participant. When all the competitors were down, Hornswoggle appeared from under the ring. He hit a tadpole splash, and the referee counted the three. In addition to the Cruiserweight Championship, this victory also earned Hornswoggle the title of shortest champion in WWE history. WrestleMania 32 opened with a seven-man ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship. The match featured two former IC champions, as well as two rising stars, so in everyone's mind, it had to be one of them. In fact, that's what it was looking like. The Miz had knocked Sami Zayn off the ladder and climbed to the top, looking like he was about to win his fifth Intercontinental Championship. However, Zack Ryder appeared from out of nowhere and snagged the IC Championship. By this time, the Ryder Revolution was long gone, and it seemed like WWE would never push the Lana and IC again. This made Zack Ryder's WrestleMania Championship victory all the more shocking and exciting to see, although this celebration only lasted about 24 hours. Distracted! Miz hooks the leg! Miz is a five-time Intercontinental Champion! At Money in the Bank 2011, CM Punk defeated John Cena to win the WWE Championship. Punk's contract expired later that night, meaning that WWE was without a world champion. That was pretty shocking, but something even crazier happened eight days later. In Punk's aftermath, an eight-man tournament was set up to crown a new WWE Champion. It ultimately came down to Rey Mysterio and The Miz. The two kicked off the July 25th, 2011 episode of Raw in a chaotic back-and-forth match. Rey managed to rise to the occasion, though, and win the WWE Championship, a huge milestone for one of WWE most popular wrestlers. Daddy's coming home, baby, and this time he's bringing the gold. Daddy would not bring the gold. Later that night, Triple H would put the new WWE Champion in a match. Mysterio's opponent, John Cena. While Ray looked good, there was no way he was defeating John Cena, especially after having already wrestled earlier in the night. Cena won the match, and Ray Mysterio never seriously competed for the WWE Championship ever again. However, Ray Mysterio is actually really lucky because he almost had to stop wearing his mask. To learn about the backstage rule Ray broke and how he got around it, watch this video.